So welcome everyone to today's session. My name is Scott Urbis, and today we're going to be taking a look at grading and modeling around bridge abutment areas. So the objective of today's presentation is to learn some tools and techniques for doing some of this grading around your bridge abutment areas. So on my screen here, I have a, a completed uh, 3D model of what we're going to accomplish today. I have my roadway corridor here with all their side slopes. I have my 3D bridge here that was created with the Open Bridge Modeler. And then now underneath the bridge, you can see I have some fill slope grading here and around the edge of the abutment, I have my wraparound uh, slope grading there. That's what we're going to learn how to create um, today. Hopefully by the end of the session, we should be able to have a good understanding of how the uh, tools and the techniques to do that. So the agenda, I'm going to cover a couple different uh, methods for uh, creating this type of grading. The first one is going to be what I call just a simple grading method where we start from the top and just grade our way down to existing ground. And this is just to give you some fundamental concepts that you may want to utilize along the way in your uh, engineering process. And then the sec second example we're going to take a look at is a more detailed grading method where we, we go up and we go down, which I call the down up method. And uh, the finished product will look like this image on the screen. We'll have some grading in front of the bridge abutment. We'll have grading up to the upper roadway corridor as well as the uh, wraparound slopes on the uh, the abutment edges there. So let's jump into it. So the first method that I'm going to talk about is just utilizing the simple grading method. Okay, this is where you don't really need really any real details. You're just trying to get maybe come up with some preliminary engineering. And this is going to start with just creating some basic geometry, some horizontal geometry at the approximate location of your abutment or your approach slab and creating some vertical geometry either along the top of the corridor or the bottom of the corridor, really any uh, vertical geometry that you may need. And then from there, once you have those two pieces of information, we can apply some linear templates to, to, the, to that geometry to create our two to one grading slopes or whatever type of uh, grading that you need to the existing ground terrain, okay? So here on the screen, this is what I'm gonna demonstrate first, just how to create just some really basic um, fill slopes uh, in, in your corridor for your bridge grading. So I'm gonna to toggle over to the software here real quick. And, and for this particular session, if, you, if you're gonna follow along um, in your office or at home, we're working in the training and examples workspace and we're using the training Imperial work set. Okay, we're also gonna be utilizing um, the files in the session five data folder, go into the corridors folder. And we're gonna be using the highway 72 corridor mainline file, okay? So take a minute to uh, make sure you're in the proper workspace and work set and make sure you're in the proper corridor file here. This is what we're gonna be working in today. Now, if you recall, back in session number three, we modeled this corridor with multiple template drops and uh, in the bridge area here, we just processed a, a bridge template through the through this bridge area here. Now I actually have gone ahead and modeled a bridge with Open Bridge Modeler, which we'll show later. Um, but for the beginning part of this presentation, I'm just going to turn off this portion of our corridor that represents the bridge because we're really not going to be needing that for doing uh, this first example. So to turn off the bridge, I could either delete my template drop or I could just come in here and, and and swap out the template drop for something different. So I'm just gonna come in here and select my template drop. And I'm going to, uh, actually I need to open up my template library first. So let's make sure we open up the template library. So go up to create template tool, go to file open. Let's browse over to our template library and make sure we have our template library open. Okay, so that's our template library. And if you recall, when we modeled this previously, you know, in this bridge area, we had a bridge template that looked something like this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna swap out this bridge template for my blank template here, just so we can clear the space there. I don't wanna delete the template drop just yet. So I'm just gonna come over here, select my template drop, go into my properties tool here. And I'm just gonna select my blank template just to uh, remove that area there from the uh, from the corridor for the time being okay 
So let's do that. That'll process and update our corridor. And also what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change my approach slab template here just to be the, the standard roadway template. So I'm going to select that template drop. Go to my properties here. And I'll just go to my regular roadway template. And we're going to select that. And I'm just doing this for clarity purposes just to uh, show the fundamental concept of what we're going to be talking about here today. So this is going to be the simple example. Now at this point, what I want to do is I'm going to rotate my 3D model around. So I'm going to come up to my view rotation tool here. I'm just going to use my mouse to rotate this around. Oops. Get stuck there. And I'm going to zoom into this area here. So this is the area that we're going to be focusing on for this first example. And the first thing I want to do here is I want to create some horizontal geometry. And when I create this horizontal geometry, I want to create it along the right side of my corridor here in the front along the front area of my corridor here where maybe the bridge abutment or approach slab is and I also want to create the geometry along the left side here okay so to do that I'm going to go up to the geometry tools so go up to the geometry tab I go to my feature definition toolbar so I want to activate that from the standards here select the feature definition toolbar I'm just going to dock that right over here at the top. Okay, uh, geometry that I'm going to create, I'm going to uh, select the feature definition here, so I get something drawn with the correct symbology. So I'm just going to be using the one in the linear folder under bridge, bridge abutment, and I'm going to select the set active feature definition um, button there to uh, set that active. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create some geometry along the side, in the front, and then along the edge of the corridor here. Okay, so that's step number one. I'm going to do this by utilizing the uh, complex geometry tools over here. I'm going to use the complex by PI tool. So I'm going to select this, complex by PI, and we're going to begin placing our geometry along this edge of the corridor in the front and then ultimately wrap around this side. Okay, so notice in the lower left portion of the screen it says enter first PI point. So I'm just going to zoom in here. And what you'll see here is I have this green line here that's in 2D. That's our template geometry that represents the uh, top of slope line from our 3D model here. Okay, so we're going to utilize that as a guide to for placing our geometry on the on the edges of the corridor. And I'm also going to be utilizing the uh, intersection snap to uh, snap to the intersection there. So we're going to come over here, select intersect snap. I'm going to snap to uh, my graphics here. That's going to be the beginning point of this geometry that I'm creating. Okay, then I'm going to snap to the end point of my template geometry here. So just come over here, we're going to snap to that end point there, left click to accept. That places the first leg of our geometry. Now I'm going to come over to the uh, left side of the corridor here, and I'm zooming in and out with my uh, middle wheel button on my mouse here. So those at home or in your office and aren't familiar with zooming in and out, I'm just zooming in and out with my middle button on my mouse. Okay, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to snap, key point snap to the end point of this template geometry represents the uh, top of slope line for the left side of my corridor. I'm going to accept that with a left click. And then over here to finish this off, I'm going to go back to my intersection snap. Let's select this cyan line here. I'm going to move my cursor over to the uh, template geometry there, that, that top of slope line. You'll see the intersection icon there, lock into that location, and then you can just left click to accept, and then you can right click to complete. Okay, so now at this point, we have a horizontal alignment or horizontal geometry around the uh, area of the, uh, the roadway that we want to uh, create the grading for. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we need to assign some elevation to this. We need to create a vertical alignment or a profile uh, that gets associated to this horizontal alignment. Because what we're going to do eventually is we're going to assign a linear template that has two to one grading that's going to wrap around this element, okay, and target the existing ground, okay, just like you saw in the image on the screen previously. So let's go ahead and uh, open up a profile view of this element. So I'm going to select this. 
I'm just going to hover my cursor over here for a second. Oops. So hover your cursor over the element for a second to the uh, context menu comes up. Select open profile model. Select any of the views at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to open up view number four. So I'm going to select view number four. I'm going to left click in that view. And then what you see here is the existing ground terrain drawn into the uh, profile model here. And it shows you the uh, elevations on the side and the stationing at the bottom of the uh, horizontal alignment. Okay. Exaggeration can be changed by simply going to the view attributes, adjusting the exaggeration here from one of the uh, pre-configured uh, values. Okay. Or you can use the shift button on your keyboard and your middle button on your mouse. Okay. To, uh, to zoom in and out and adjust the exaggeration. Okay. So at this point now, what we want to do is we need to determine what our our elevations are going to be or what our vertical geometry needs to be um, so that it lines up with our 3D model here. Okay, so one of, the, one of the tools we can use to help establish our, our vertical alignment or our profile along this element is this tool called Create 3D Cut. This, this is going to allow us to take a dynamic slice through the 3D model and display it into the profile model view here. Okay, so I'm going to select Create 3D Cut. Okay, it's going to give us an option here for our placement method. I'm going to use corners and going to left click to accept that. And then for my start point, I'm just going to snap to one of these vertical lines in the profile view here. This is the beginning or the starting station of our element at zero plus zero zero. It's going to snap to an elevation somewhere down here around 525. So I'm just going to snap to that. And then for the end point, we're going to snap to the other vertical line over here, which represents the ending of our geometry to maybe elevation somewhere around 560 or so. Okay. And then we're going to left click to accept that. And then what you'll see here is it creates this, this box and it also shows us the, uh, the components and the 3D model inside of this view. Okay. Now this is just a dynamic 3D cut from the model. Okay. So this isn't actually being physically drawn in this view. It's just showing you what the model looks like um, in this view. Okay, now you can use this as a guide for creating your vertical geometry that you may use for your um, for your abutment grading, or for your bridge grading in this area. Okay, so for this basic example, you know, we're just going to use this as a guide. Okay, so one of the things we can do is we could trace along this these elements if we'd like. And in order to trace along the elements to create your vertical geometry, we need to uh, toggle on our snaps. So I'm going to go up to my home tab here. Make sure you're in the active view number four here. Go to your reference files. I'm going to go to home. Go to my attach tools. I'm going to go to references. And you can see here the 3D models referenced into there. I'm going to toggle on my snaps here. And that's going to allow me to snap to these graphics. Okay. Now, I'm not worried about creating rules or anything. For, so for all those people that um, know about rules and things, don't worry about that. We're just going to disregard the rules for now. We're just going to simply draw some geometry in here so we can get some elevations assigned and create a 3D feature. Okay, so we're going to go over to my geometry tab here. We're going to go back to our, our vertical geometry tools. And we're going to go to my complex geometry, and we're going to just do profile complex by PI. Now what you see here in this dynamic view, and if I zoom out in the uh, the 2D view here, you can see we're going to start and move along this edge and define our geometry, our vertical geometry along this edge. So you can see that green that green line there represents the top of slope line along the edge there. Also represents that template geometry in 2D. And then if we move along in the front, you can see the pavement and the uh, the base components there of the pavement underneath. And then if we move along on the side here see the top of slope line on the side there okay so I'm basically just going to kind of trace along some of these elements just so I can get some type of vertical geometry that's going to match up to my uh, top of my roadway corridor okay but you could draw any vertical geometry that you want okay this is just a simple example okay so let's go in here and just start drawing some uh, vertical geometry so I'm first going to snap to the beginning point there and then to the end point of my uh, top of slope line there and I'm going to jump over here. I'm going to jump over my pavement and go straight over to my ditch grading here. I'm just going to snap to the outside edge of my shoulder here. Snap to my ditch. 
And we're just going to create some vertical geometry that we can use for our grading. Okay, so let's come over here and snap to this edge of shoulder here. And then continue over and snap to our endpoint. Okay. Then right click to complete. And now we have a vertical alignment or a profile. Okay, that follows this, this red graphic there. Okay, so once we have that created, we can go ahead and we can delete the 3D cut. Again, this is just a temporary graphic. Um, can display it or simply remove it. So we're going to come in here and just delete it. We don't really need it anymore. We just kind of used it as a guide. Okay. Uh, one other tool that you can use as well to uh, use as a guide when you're creating some of this vertical geometry. This one doesn't give you as much detail, but we got the uh, quick profile from surface tool. You could also use that. That'll display the top surface of the corridor. So you can just come out here, select your corridor, and that would display the, uh, the top surface onto the uh, profile model. So that also functions as a good tool to help you when you're designing some of this vertical stuff in relation to your corridor. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of that. Okay, now let's go ahead and set our geometry active. So we created this new vertical geometry. Let's set this active, select it. Say so set as active profile. And when you do that, it's going to create the 3D feature in the 3D model. So let me close the profile view here. And you can see that 3D feature that I created there. It's kind of now functioning as somewhat of a transverse type of feature in the, uh, in the 3D model view there. So now we have our horizontal and vertical geometry and we have our 3D feature. Now we can go in and uh, start doing the real grading. And the way we're going to do the grading is by utilizing linear templates. Okay. So I'm going to go over my corridor tool here. I'm going to take a look at the template that I'm going to use. So I'm going to open up my template library. So I'm going to select create template. Let's take a look at our template library. Again, this template library is delivered in the, uh, the templates folder, Highway 72 templates. Okay, so that's the one I'm using. And for this first scenario, again, this is just a very basic fundamental scenario where we're just going to be doing a two-to-one slope, fill slope down to a intersect existing ground. Okay, so this is the uh, template that I'm going to use. It's called bridge fill two-to-one down. All this is going to do is if we were to, to test this using the test button, Okay, it's just going to go down and target existing ground until it finds it. Okay, so that's the uh, template that we're going to use for this particular case. So once you review the template, we can simply close the create template tool here. And then now we're going to go over to the model detailing tab and we're going to utilize the apply linear template tool. So this tool allows us to apply any template in the template library to any piece of geometry that has a profile or 3D feature defined. Okay. So let's go ahead and select that, apply linear template. We're going to apply that bridge fill two to one template to this, to this geometry that we've just created. Okay, and that's gonna create the uh, two to one bridge grading that we need in this particular area. Okay, so I'm gonna locate the element to apply the template to, that's our horizontal alignment here. And then to select the template from the template library, you can simply select the alt key, press down on the keyboard, Go into our template library, locate the Highway 72 project template, go into the grading folder, and then go and select the bridge fill two to one down template. And then we can click OK. And that will fill out the, uh, the toolbox there. And then we'll left click through the prompts. It's going to ask us for the start station. We can just press Alt on the keyboard to lock to the start station. So it's just going to go to the beginning of the uh, of the horizontal geometry there. When you press Alt, press Alt to lock into the end. Press Alt to lock to the end. It's going to lock into the ending station. And then for the reflection side, we have an option to reflect to the inside or to the outside. We're going to go to the left side here. So select the left side of the element and then left click to accept. Left click to accept again. You can give this a description if you want. I'm just going to left click and it's going to go ahead and create that 3D grading along that element utilizing that template. Okay, so you can see in the 3D model, it's doing the, uh, the wraparound slopes here. It's doing a, the two to one grading in front of the roadway. And then if we spin the model around a little bit, you'll see there's a little bit on the side here as well. We're, we're wrapping around. Okay, so this is very simple 
not really super detailed. Um, you know, a lot of times you may have like some wing walls and abutment walls and that kind of thing in here where you might have to do something a little bit different. But this is just a very fundamental concept of doing the more detailed stuff, which I'll show in a little bit. So now one of the other things that happened here is you're going to notice that when we did this, because we created this alignment with, uh, you know, along the edges of the corridor here on the right and left side, you're going to get some overlap with your mainline corridor. Okay, so if we select our linear template, 3D graphics here, or these 3D components, you can see that they overlap the uh, the mainline corridor graphics here. Okay, so that's obviously a problem. So we need a way to clean that up. One way we can clean that up is by just utilizing some corridor clipping. Okay, so we have some really good clipping tools in here to uh, clip between corridors and whatnot to clean up these areas of overlap. Okay, so I'm going to go up to the corridors tab here, and we're going to do some corridor clipping to, to remove some of this overlap between these two different objects here. Okay, so I'm going to go to corridor clipping, select add clipping reference. It's going to prompt us to select the corridor to, to be clipped. Well, I want to clip my mainline corridor, so I'm going to select that first. Then it's going to ask me to locate my first clipping reference. So my clipping reference is going to be my bridge grading here that I just created. So I'm going to select that. That's going to ask me for my next clipping reference or a reset to complete. So I'm just going to right click to complete. That's going to go ahead and, and clip that out and clean that up real nicely for me. Okay. So now it did the clipping. And if we come over here and we select the components now, you can see there. And there, there's no more overlap, okay? So that cleans it up really nicely. So sometimes you can utilize clipping in these areas when you have these, these overlapping uh, components and whatnot. Now, one other thing you may want to do is you don't always have grass in these areas. Sometimes you may have concrete or riprap or some other type of material, okay? So I want to show you real quick, you know, how we can model some other type of material in this area. Okay, so right now I just have a grass template that I'm using. It doesn't really have any thickness or depth to it. But sometimes you may have riprap in front of these areas, okay, along your project. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to select my template drop, okay, in the uh, in the 2D view here. That's the bridge fill 2 to 1 down template. We're going to swap this out for a different template. Okay, so I'm going to go into the properties here. So you can just hover your cursor over the template drop until you get into the properties. Go into the template name here. And I got one in here called Bridge Fill 2 to 1 Down with Riprap. And you can see here the Riprap template actually has a, a depth to it or a thickness. Okay, so we're going to apply this to our to our linear template there, and you'll see the uh, the model update and whatnot with the, with the Riprap. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click OK once I select that. It's going to go ahead and rebuild our model for us there. And now you'll get more of a uh, Riprap look in the uh, 3D model view as well as thickness. Okay, now... The advantage of this doing, if you have this situation, is now we can get quantities from this. Okay, this is a 3D mesh. It's got some thickness to it and depth. So if we just take a quick look at the properties just by selecting it, we can see the uh, the cubic feet of the riprap. Okay, and in addition to that, even even better is we could come up to the home tab here. We can come over to our our civil analysis tools. We can go down to our quantities report by name boundary. And this will give us quantities on anything in the model that it finds. Okay, and I'm just going to left-click through the prompts here. Run this report real quick. You can see the uh, all the linear features being quantified here in the length column. But then down here at the bottom, if you want to get the, the true riprap quantity here, you can see here that's cubic feet. But if you need that in cubic yards for whatever reason, you just need to go over to the tools here, change the format option, convert that to cubic yards and now you know your cubic yards of riprap in that particular area or anywhere in the model where you have riprap okay so that's just a simple example of some of the things that you can do um, with with modeling these areas so it's going to take a quick break there and uh, we're going to jump into the more detailed modeling example so let me jump back to my powerpoint here and talk about the uh, the next example. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to cover is going to be a more detailed grading model. Okay, now this one I, I am be utilizing what I call a, a, a down-up method, 
And the reason I call it that is because I'm going to be targeting two things. I'm going to be targeting some things down below. I'm going to be targeting existing ground to create some slopes. I'm also going to be targeting the upper roadway to uh, create some slopes and things as well. Now, this, this method here assumes that the detailed bridge model is complete. It assumes that we know exactly where the uh, bridge abutments are located horizontally and vertically. And it also assumes that we're using a certain abutment design standard. Okay, so what you see on my screen here is the uh, completed open bridge model that I used with, that I created using open bridge modeler software. Okay, so we got the deck, we got the beams, we got our, our piers, and we got our abutment and our abutment walls and whatnot. All that stuff's been created already. Okay, and I'll turn that on in the model in a little bit. And then over here, I have a, a design standard that I'm using for my uh, for my abutment. And this is going to tell me some critical information about for when I go to do my grading. You can see here the uh, top of my beam seat, um, and I'm, this is going to be referring to the eastbound abutment here, which is this back abutment or the rear abutment. Um, the top beam seat elevation there is 535.04. Now, according to this design standard, um, the top of slope line needs to be a minimum of one foot below that. Okay, so when I start creating my uh, geometry for this, we want to pay attention to that one foot um, minimum um, distance there to uh, define this elevation. Okay, now also notice this two to one slope comes up and then it eventually will intersect or intercept the upper roadway surface. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. So we're going to jump in back into my file here. We're going to take a look at my bridge. Okay, so let's uh, reorient the, the 3D model here a little bit I'm going to rotate it around because we're going to be working in the uh, the rear approach slab or the rear abutment area here okay and I'm also going to turn on my uh, my 3d bridge model okay I have the bridge referenced in 2d and 3d so let's go ahead and take a look at it in the 3d model view first so if you go up to the home tab go to the attached tools go over to references got my eastbound my westbound bridges already referenced in here so I'm going to select both of those Going to display those on and that's going to look something like that okay now also in the 2d view i'm going to left click in the 2d view i want to turn on the 2d graphics of the bridge too as well display that on and then i'm going to close my references dialog okay so let's take a look at the bridge in 3d you can see what's going on here you can see i got my piles my piers my footings and then I got my, obviously, my abutments and my abutment walls here, okay? Now, for clarity purposes, I'm going to come through and uh, turn off some levels because we need to see what's going on with the grading as we go through this process, okay? So I'm just going to right-click and hold down my mouse button here and turn off my bridge deck and my bridge beams and a couple other things here just so we can see what we're doing. So I'm going to select Turn Level Off by Element, select my beams, my deck, some of these other elements, just to kind of clear up the uh, the view there. Okay, so our objective here is basically to do all the grading in front of this uh, bridge abutment. Okay, so we're first going to establish the fill slopes across the front face of the abutment, and then we'll do the wraparound slopes on the side. Okay, that's going to be a very specific um, process that I'm using here. Um, so just kind of follow along with me, if you will. Okay, now in the 2D view, I've already had the uh, the beams and the deck turned off. So what you see here in the 2D view are just my bridge abutment walls and the abutment and then the uh, the piers and whatnot. So I'm going to zoom into the 2D view here. And the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to establish a piece of horizontal geometry along the face of the abutment. Okay. So I'm going to come over to my geometry tools once again. Use line between points command. Again, I'm using the bridge abutment feature definition. I'm just going to zoom into the eastern corner of my abutment down here for the eastbound road here, or the eastbound abutment corner. I'm going to snap to that. And I'm going to snap to the westbound corner of that bridge abutment to create that horizontal geometry. Okay. Now we know, according to our uh, our bridge detail, that the top of slope elevation has to be five. 3404 okay which is approximately one foot below the actual beam seat okay so we need to create some vertical geometry at that elevation okay so you can guess what I'm going to do next I'm going to come over here I'm going to select my horizontal geometry 
hover my cursor over it for a little bit there. And I'm going to open up my profile model so we can take a look at the, uh, the profile view. Okay, so I'm going to open up view number four again. Click into the view. You're going to see the existing ground terrain. I'm going to use my shift key and my middle mouse button to change my exaggeration. And then I'm also going to take a look at my 3D cut through here so you can see what the 3D model looks like in relation to the profile along this element. So I'm going to call it a 3D cut, set it to corners, snap to our vertical line here, the start point, snap to the end point vertical line there. You can see there what our bridge looks like in more of a cross-sectional context using the, the 3D cut tool. Okay, So again, it's just the temporary graphics um, that you can see and use as a guide for designing some things vertically. Okay, so now we know that this top elevation along the uh, beam seat there is 53504. We're going to place our top of slope line at 53404. Okay, it's just a foot down. So you can do that just by using the constant elevation tool or the profile by constant elevation. So in our vertical tools here, we'll go over to profile, element profiles, select profile by constant elevation, and we'll select our abutment element here. Okay. We'll right-click, reset to end. And then when the elevation uh, field pops up here, key in 534.04, Press enter, and that'll create the uh, the vertical geometry there as well as the 3D feature in the in the model view over there. Okay, so once we're done with that, we can just simply delete the 3D cut volume. We don't really need that anymore. That's already set active. Now, if you have uh, you know bridge abutments that are aren't constant elevation, you know you can draw whatever type of geometry you need in here. Okay, this is just a simple example where my profile is the same for both roadways. Everything's symmetrical, so I'm at the same elevation. But if you have different um, different beam seat elevations and whatnot, just draw whatever vertical geometry you need for your situation. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this profile. Okay, we got our 3D element there. So now the next thing we're gonna do is, is we're gonna start creating our, our fill slope grading that's gonna go down and target existing ground. And let's take a look at some of these templates that we're gonna use before we start doing the, uh, the actual grading. So I wanna explain this a little bit as to why I'm doing what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna go up to my corridors, I'm gonna go back into my template library. Okay, so this next part of the uh, presentation, we're going to be doing the grading in front of the bridge abutments, okay? Now I'm gonna be using some different templates for this process, okay? So the first one I'm gonna use is called Bridge Fill 2 to 1 Up Down, okay? So that template looks something like this, okay? Now, the purpose of this template is to do the grading in front of the bridge abutment, and it also needs to um, find the two-to-one intercept point of the corridor or the upper roadway, okay? So we're going to need this two-to-one slope intercept point for when we go to do the wraparound slope. So that's why I built this this way. Um, so let me go in here and just test this real quick so you guys can see how this functions. Hit the testing tool. The uh, first part of the template just targets the existing ground terrain. It's just going to do your regular two to one fill slope grading in front of the abutment. And then this other target here is going to activate this other component in my template here that's going to target the upper corridor to determine my upper slope limit that I'm going to need for doing my wraparound slopes later. Okay. If we take a closer look at the uh, targets on these, I double click on the component properties. This is just a standard end condition. It's just targeting the terrain model the active terrain, okay? So that's gonna target your existing ground in most cases. Okay, now this one here, this one's set up to target a terrain model as well, but I'm using just a name here called Upper Corridor. And the Upper Corridor is just basically a placeholder for any terrain or corridor that we wanna use as a target alias later. And I'll show you how we set that up here in a little bit. Okay, so we have this template that we're gonna apply in front of our each, each of the bridge abutments. And then in between the bridges, we have a median and we have some grass grading that needs to happen. So we're going to have to switch it out a little bit and do our regular standard grading to the existing ground and to the upper roadway corridor. Okay. So just a couple templates here that I'm going to use to, to model this whole thing in front of the, uh, the bridge abutments. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and let's begin. So we're going to utilize linear templates once again. So I'm going to go to the model detailing tab. Go to Apply Linear Template, 
I'm going to select the geometry and then the template that we need to select is going to be the bridge fill two to one up down. Okay, which is this one. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to left click through my prompts here. I'm going to press Alt on the keyboard to lock to the start. And then if, if the lock is still engaged at this particular point, press end on your keyboard to disengage the lock. I'm actually going to be keying in some values here. I'm going to key in 0 plus 49.04. I'm going to press enter on my keyboard to lock that in. And then the reflection side, you want to reflect to the right here. And I'm just going to left click through the prompts. And it's going to go ahead and build that grading in front of the abutment there. Okay. Now the next step is we need to target this upper roadway surface because we need to find that two to one intercept point so we can find that two to one slope limit as it intersects the upper roadway. So I'm going to do that by utilizing a tool called target aliasing. So I'm going to go over to corridors. I'm going to define a target aliasing. This is so we can target another uh, terrain or corridor other than the existing ground. So I'm gonna, it's going to prompt me to locate my corridor. I'll select my linear template down here. Now notice in my target options here we have the active surface and we have the upper corridor so remember the upper corridor is being read from my template remember i had a placeholder in there for the target that was called upper corridor well i can select any surface or corridor um, to define the upper to upper corridor target okay so i'm going to select my highway 72 corridor which is my main line add that to the dialog hit apply and that's going to go ahead and establish that slope line up there okay so now at this point what we can do is to see this a little clearer I'm going to go into my display styles, so I'm going to go to my view attributes. I'm going to change my display style to transparent, and you can see those components being drawn behind the, uh, the abutment wall there. Okay. Now also in the 2D view, you can see where that limit line is, that 2 to 1 slope limit line. Okay. It's being drawn in the, uh, in the 2D view as well. Okay. So let's continue. Uh, defining the grading along the front of here. So the next next step in the process is to do the grading between the two bridges and the abutments here. So I'm going to go back to our linear template tool, apply linear template, select the geometry using a different template this time in between here. We'll do the up down grass. We'll use that one. We'll left click through the prompts. The uh, If the start station is locked, press end on the keyboard. And for our start station, we're going to key in 0 plus 49.04, since that was the ending of the previous template drop. And then for the ending station, press end to remove the lock. And then we're going to end at 70.03. Press enter to lock in the value. Move your mouse to the right. Set the direction. And it's going to build that part of the... Uh, of the grading there. Now we need to target the upper roadway corridor again. So we're going to go back to our, our target aliasing tool. So we'll go to corridors, find target aliasing, locate our linear template corridor here, set this to upper corridor, select the corridor highway 72, add it to the list, hit apply. Now it's going to go ahead and it's going to target that upper roadway corridor. But right away you're going to see a problem. We got some overlapping issues there right? Okay, the mainline corridor is now overlapping that grading I just did there. Well, we can clean that up really easily just by utilizing some corridor clipping. So I'm going to come over to add a clipping reference here. So go to corridors tab, select corridor clipping, add a clipping reference. Corridor we want to clip is the mainline once again. So we'll select that. Clipping reference will be this linear template. And I'll right click to accept and I'll go ahead and clean that up for us. Okay, so you can see there, did a nice job cleaning up that, that overlap there. So now the final step to uh, complete the grading in front of the abutments here. Let's go back to model detailing, apply linear template, locate our element once again. Make sure you're selecting the uh, horizontal geometry. Use the alt down arrow to select the up down template. And then left click through the prompts. Start station, toggle that off, go from 0 plus 70.3 to the end. So press Alt to lock to the end. 
your cursor to the right, left click through the prompts, and then that will build the, uh, the grating in front of the uh, abutment there. And also go back to your corridors, find your target aliasing. Once again, same process, locate the corridor, set it to upper corridor at highway 72 to list, and it's gonna create that for us, okay? Now, let's learn how we can do the, uh, the wraparound slopes. Okay, so we've got all our grading um, pretty much completed in front of our, our bridge abutments here. So let's talk about how we accomplish this wraparound slope grading. Okay, so the slopes on the mainline corridor, these are coming down at two to one. Slopes in front of the abutment here are coming down at two to one. So now we need a way to uh, wrap this around, make this all um, nice and neat and fill in the gap there. Okay, there's a couple different ways you can do this. I'm gonna show you two different ways. First way, we're just going to utilize a 3D point, some geometry, and some linear templates to accomplish it. So let's take a look at how we how we would do this. Okay, so I'm going to be working in this corridor here. Okay, so one of the things that I that I did with my template is I had this two to one slope line being projected up here onto my main line. Now I did that because I know I need to ha know the horizontal and vertical location and the elevation of this critical two to one point here okay so i need to create some type of point here because i want to slope down at two to one and i want to wrap around between these two different um corridors here and these these slopes okay so i'm going to place a point here with an elevation then i'm going to create an arc and i'm going to slope down at two to one to that arc and then i'm going to assign a, a linear template to that to uh, to fill in this gap okay so let's follow along here so i'm going to go to geometry and to determine this elevation, one of the handy tools before I actually create the geometry, I'm going to go over to the Home tab. I'll go to Civil Analysis. I'm going to go to Analyze Point. And notice here's our top of slope line from our mainline corridor. That's our hinge point. You can select that template geometry, and you can get some useful information. Okay, you can get the elevation and track along that. Okay, so if we wanted to know their critical elevation where that 2 to 1 slope limit hits our upper roadway corridor, we can just simply snap to that. And you can see that critical elevation is going to be 541. 0.839 okay so write that down remember that okay so that's our critical elevation now if we come over to our, our point tool so i'm going to go to geometry you want to place a point there at that elevation okay so i'm going to go to geometry go to point I'll select the point command okay now from here point command has a few different elevation modes we can have it set for none you have it set for value you can have it pull from a terrain or a mesh or we can have it pull from alignment i'm going to use alignment that way I don't have to key in any elevation. I can just select that template geometry and it'll know what, what elevation I, I want when I snap to that element. Okay, so I'm gonna set that for from alignment. I'm gonna locate the reference element. Our reference element's gonna be our top of slope or our hinge point here, this hinge template geometry. Okay, that's got elevation on it, so it can figure that out. Our, our offset elevation is gonna we'll set that for zero. And then for the, uh, for the, the point, the data point's gonna be the end point of our two to one slope line here. Okay, so you can kind of see that there in the 3D model view over here. And in 2D, that's our, our two two to one slope limit line, okay, from our template. Okay, now in the in the name here, I can just key in eastbound point. I'm also using a feature definition called E Geom Property Corner. Okay. Um, it could be any 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 feature definition you want. I, I'm using this one because it placed a nice symbol that was easy to see um, graphically. So I'm going to go ahead and data point, select that. Okay, it's going to create that 3D point for us. Okay, so you can see that in 3D model, it placed that point at that critical elevation there, horizontally and vertically. And now what we're going to do is create some geometry so that we can slope down to at a two to one slope. Okay, so the next step is to come over here and create an arc. I'm going to go and create the an arc between points. I'm going to set the placement mode to center radius. So set that to center radius and then left click. And for radius value, I'm just gonna key in 15 and press enter. And then I'm going to snap to the origin point of that geometry point that I created there. Okay, and then to set the direction of our arc, I'm gonna snap to our, our linear template geometry down here. Okay, our construction limit, that's from our uh, linear template geometry, it's drawn in 2D, I'm gonna snap to that. And then to uh, define the sweep angle, just going to use the uh, right arrow key on my keyboard here, key in 90 degrees, press enter to lock in that value. It's going to 
define that arc for us. Okay, so now we got an arc there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to define a two-to-one slope from this top point elevation down to this element, okay, to establish some uh, vertical elevations on this feature or that arc, okay. So let me zoom out a little bit in my 3D view, zoom in a little bit on my 2D view, come over to our model detailing tab, and what we'll do is we'll go to the uh, Actually, I need to go to the Geometry tab first, getting ahead of myself. So go to the Vertical Tools. Go to Define Profile by Slope from Point. It's going to ask us to f locate first element to profile. I'm going to select that arc. Right-click the reset. Come over here in the 3D model view, select our 3D point. That's going to prompt me to, to enter my slope. So I'm going to key in minus 50% for my slope. So when I slope downwards, point selection will be all. Point projection will be radial, profile adjustment none, and just left click through the prompts. And notice it creates a 3D feature there in the 3D model, also creates a profile associated to this horizontal piece of geometry. So now that we have that information, we go over to model detailing, go to apply linear template, and we can apply our, our grading template to this geometry just like we did with the other uh, pieces of geometry. So we'll go into apply linear template. Okay, we'll come over here, we'll select our element. Use the Alt down arrow, and we'll come over here and select a two to one fill down to existing ground. And what that's going to do is going to attach that to our geometry. It'll wrap around our our arc there. And when we get to start station, we'll just press Alt to lock into the start, Alt to lock into the end, reflect this to towards the right, left click through the prompts. That's going to go ahead and create the geometry around there. Okay, but we still have a hole. Okay, so there's still a problem here. We need to fix this up a little bit. Okay, and one way we can clean that up, we're just going to adjust the, uh, I'm going to adjust the uh, radius on our arc here. Also going to increase the uh, the stroking values. Okay, when you, when you place these linear templates, it doesn't really ask you for an interval. It's using some uh, configuration variables and some stroking values um, by default. So we're going to adjust those now. Um, so let's go ahead and change the radius first, and you'll see what happens to my arc here. You'll see it it'll become a little bit more jagged looking. So I'm going to change my radius here to 0.5. Okay, now it doesn't look as quite so nice, right? But we can fix that up by just simply adjusting our stroking values, um, which will increase the template drops along the, the element there. So let me come in here. I'm going to grab my arc. I'm going to go to my properties of my arc. You can see the stroking values here. Um, linear stroke is set quite high. I'm going to bump that down to 0 0.05. That should clean that up quite nicely there around the around the arc. Okay, so we got that portion done. Now, the next thing you see here is we got some overlapping slopes with the main line. Now, we can't really do clipping in this particular situation because we'll end up with some extra components up here if we do some clipping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize something called an end condition exception to remove just the end conditions on our on our corridor here on this right side okay so let's go over to our corridor and uh, examine how we can do this so i'm going to go to my corridor tab go to end condition exception this will allow us to remove any type of end condition from the corridor okay so if you just want to see your pavement and you don't want to see end conditions on one side of your corridor you can use this tool or if you want to just assign a whole different set of end conditions to your corridor over a station range you can use this tool what i want to do is i just want to turn off my end conditions on my right side over a particular station range okay so on my right side here um, we're going to go ahead and create an end condition exception to remove these side slopes Okay, so I'm going to locate my mainline corridor. Let's locate that. We're going to give this end condition exception a name. So I'm going to just key in EC underbar eastbound right. I'll we'll left click to accept. You can see we have various options here for the type of overrides that we can do on our slopes. I'm going to utilize the one called backbone only on the right side. I'm going to left click to accept and then for my station values i've already kind of gone ahead and did this a few times so I, I pretty much know where i need to do my end condition exception okay so i already have those values here so the first one's going to be 523 plus 11.40 that's going to be the start of the exception somewhere right there roughly i'm going to left click to accept that and for the stopping station it's going to be at the end of the uh, the bridge abutment area 
which is going to be 523 plus 25. So key that in, press enter to lock in the value, left click to accept. It's going to go ahead and process and remove those uh, side slopes from the, from the corridor. And it should make that look a little bit nicer. Okay, so completed slope should look something like that. Now, if you're doing this in your office or at home, you still may have a little bit of gaps there. Um, if you see some additional gaps there, you may want to consider adding some key stations. Uh, key stations will allow us to, to add a couple additional template drops there to, to, uh, to fix up any additional gaps in between the, uh, the two uh, corridors there or, or the, the components. Okay, and I actually have a few of those in here. I have two of them that I had created previously. So you can see these two red dashed lines are key stations that I had created. Um, to help clean up some of this. Um, but for time purposes, I'm not going to cover that today. Now let's go over here real quick and finish off the, uh, the rest of the grading around this bridge. I'm going to do this side now. So I'm going to zoom into the 3D model view and just rotate it around. We're going to utilize some of the same processes on the processes on this side of the corridor as well with, with a couple different, um, but I'm going to do a couple different things than what I showed on the other side. Okay, so again, Let's first place the uh, critical 3D point over here. So you can see here's my top of slope line here. Intersects my top of slope of my edge of my mainline corridor. So that's my two to one slope line. There's my top of slope line for my mainline corridor. So let's go ahead and do the same process that we used on the other side. So I'm gonna come over here, geometry, go to the point tool. Okay, use from alignment once again. I'm going to select my template geometry for my top of slope or my hinge line here. Snap to uh, the intersection or the end point of my, oops, snap there. Intersection of that two to one slope line and my top of slope for my mainline corridor. Oops, do that again. Did not pull the right elevation. Do that. Okay, so we got that point there. So again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come back and create some arc geometry. Center radius method. I'll just key in 15 for the radius. Oops. So origin point snap to snap to the origin there. Set my uh, direction by snapping to the linear template down below. Use the right arrow key, set the sweep angle to 90, and that creates that geometry. Go back over to our profile by slope from point tool, slope down again at minus 50% or 2 to 1. We'll profile for this element, reset to complete, locate our 3D point there. Left click through the prompts, I'll create that element like so. And now the next thing I'm going to do that's different than what I did previously is we're going to create a, a 3D element out here by utilizing a different tool that can project down to the existing ground. So I'm going to go over to the model detailing. I'm going to utilize the uh, create 3D by slope to target tool. Okay, this one will allow us to, to find the existing ground just use it, utilizing a 3D feature. Okay, so we're going to come over here and select create 3D by slope to target. Set the slope option to terrain. Set the cut fill option to fill only. Set the start and end slope to 50. Corner option to rounded. Transition type to constant. I'm also going to switch my feature definition here so that it creates more of a, uh, a grading type of feature definition. It's more suitable for grading applications. So I'm going to come into my template points. Go to grading. I'm going to do the TL end fill tie. That'll change the uh, feature definition there for me. Now I'm just going to click through the prompts here. So we set this to terrain model, locate our reference element, reset for the active terrain. We're actually going to be targeting the existing terrain. Left we'll click through the fill option. You can see here the temporary graphics showing you where it's going to intercept the uh, temporary or the active terrain model. Set the location side to right. Press Alt on your keyboard to lock to the start. Oh, on your keyboard to lock to the end data point to accept. Okay, so it creates that 3D feature down there, two to one slope to intersect exi existing ground. 
Now at this point, you see a little bit of a gap there. Again, that's because of the uh, the stroking tolerances or values that are set on our, our element up top. You can fix that by simply coming in here, adjusting those. Again, I'm just going to key in 0 0.05. That should uh, that should fix that up for us. Okay, so that closes that gap up a little bit. Now at this point, to actually finish the grading on this, we're just going to use a, a terrain model with some surface templates to uh, to detail this out. Okay, so I'm going to go over to my terrain tools, and we're just going to be utilizing the geometry we just created, and we're going to create a terrain model of, from these elements, and we'll apply a surface template to it to give it some uh, material. Okay, so I'm going to go over to terrain, go to from elements, I'll set the feature type to break line, set my feature definition to proposed boundary, call this westbound fill slope, I come over here, I'm going to select this feature, this feature, right click, left click through the prompts. It's going to create a terrain there. You can see the terrain boundary being formed. And then we're going to come in here, we're going to add that uh, 3D point or add that as a spot to the terrain so we can further uh, develop this and build this correctly. So we'll come over here, we'll select the terrain model element to add. So we've got to select our terrain model, select our 3D point. Make sure it's set for spot, right click to accept, left click to complete. Okay, so it added that to the uh, to the terrain there. Okay, so the terrain model boundary is here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to apply a surface template to that so we can get some material, so we can do some grass. So I'm going to apply a grass surface template. So I'm going to go over to apply surface template. This allows us to apply uh, a material thickness and a material to any terrain model. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and just select grass. I'm going to go down into my surface templates here. We deliver a whole bunch with the product. You can see we got aggregate, pavement, concrete, dirt. I'm just going to use grass once again. So I'm going to select grass. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to locate my terrain model here. Westbound fill slope. Left click through my prompts. It's going to go ahead and apply that. And now we have grass in this area. Okay. So that's going to look similar to the other side. And then to uh, clean up the slopes here again, we'll just utilize an in condition exception to clean up the slopes and then we'll be we'll we'll, we'll be complete. Okay, so I'm going to go over here, create in condition exception. And we're going to be working on the left side now. So let me locate my mainline corridor. Give this a name. Westbound left. Set the backbone only to left. I've clicked through the prompts, key in my stations, 523 plus 11.40, and then go to 523 plus 25, lock in that value. It's going to remove those components up top of the mainline corridor. It should clean that up a little bit nicer for us on that left side there. Okay, so see now that's what that looks like in the 3D model. Go ahead and change our display style back to uh, illustration, ignore lighting, and you can kind of see what that looks like now. So now if we rotate this all around, we get some nice uh, nice grading going on around our, our bridge area here. Okay, so again, you know, there's some other more complicated things we could do here, but, uh, you know, for the time that we have today, this is pretty much all I have to cover um, obviously, you know, every situation is different. Some bridge abutments have, you know, walls that come out on the, on the side here and other things that are involved. Um, but hopefully some of these tools and techniques that, I, that I've demonstrated today <clears throat> might be useful for, for your particular situation. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.